So come on in. We have a special presentation that's going to start right away. And first, I want to say welcome. Welcome, everybody, to this very special morning, my second anniversary as your senior minister. Thank you for blessing me, for holding me in high consciousness as I do the same for you. Thank you for seeing that light of God within me that I see in you. We've had a few challenges with something called a pandemic, and we've had folks that have gone through just a lot in the last couple years, and there's still some effects of that rolling through. And we hold everyone in that high conscious space, that liberation, that freedom, that we have choice, that we have choice. So I would like to invite Johnson and Mike, and I know at the end of service we have a little special presentation, so don't go away after the peace song. And I would like to step aside for a moment as we honor all of our veterans. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So for all of our veterans, would you remain standing so that we can give you our gratitude, our thanks. I am going to open in prayer and then we are going to sing the national anthem with joy. So if you will take this moment and find that sacred space within you that place that we honor those who have served us on the highest level. For they heard that call and they said, yes, Lord, I am there. I am willing to sacrifice whatever it takes for the betterment of my humanity family. We hold all those who have gone before us in this incredible light, this energy, this form, knowing that they did what they were called to do. We hold those who are serving in our military today across this world in that high light that we surround them in warmth. We hold the vision even when they cannot see it themselves. We remind our neighbors that this is the price for freedom. We hold in high consciousness a day and a time when there will be no war, that we stand for peace. We stand for peace in our hearts and our minds in our country and for the world. We're deeply grateful for each person who stands up in their truth, who resides in that space of a sacred being, knowing what they do is for the betterment of all. And for this, we are truly grateful. We are truly grateful. And we say amen. Joy.
morning, Unity Palm Harbor. Good morning. And good morning to all of our friends out in Webby World. No, no Webby World people today, right? Sorry. Well, you know how every Sunday I get up here, and when I, when I stand up here, I say to you, please listen carefully because our options may have changed. <laughs> well, this Sunday our options really have changed. Today we're honoring all our veterans, and so heads up as we progress through the service, there are some changes in the service. You know, we have a, a springtime occasion when we celebrate all fallen Americans from every war. But today is a celebration for our veterans, both living and dead. And so if you know a veteran, be sure to hug one today. I'm available. <laughs> now, the other thing we're celebrating today is Reverend Tracy's second anniversary as our senior minister of Unity Palm Harbor. No, please hold the applause, hold the applause. And to celebrate that, there are some dignitaries that have come today, not the least of which is our son, Jonathan. Jonathan, could I ask? We thank one of our members, Kevin McCreary. Is Kevin here today? Stand up, Kevin, stand up. We want, we want to thank Kevin and his company. His company is called Castle Keepers for cleaning our carpets. Okay, not a small job. Now we ask you to be respectful of our religious home and do not bring any food or drinks into the sanctuary. No coffee, no flavored water, no soft drinks. Thank you very much. We have construction going on inside and out. Please excuse our mess in the bathrooms. Where else would you have a mess? <laughs> As Jim, Jim, Jim Akins prepares to paint them. Big hugs and appreciation for him and his team. You'll also find Jim ushering at least once a month. We are a family of volunteers. Find out how you can serve. We're looking for one person to join our flower ministry. See Judith Overcash. One person to help in the bookstore. See Dee Dee. And one or two people to help Miss Bridget once a month with the children. You make this ministry work. Be a volunteer. And we have a new little person over in the seat that Margie and I brought this morning, a little thing, little one named Sweetie. And we'd like you to help us fill the seats in the sanctuary with a new stuffed animal. As Judith said last week, these furry friends are leaving us at the end of November, so we don't have too long. And then they're going to be going down to comfort children affected by Hurricane Ian in Southwest Florida. Okay, now we have a big holiday lineup starting November 27th, the beginning of Advent with Reverend Tracy. On November 30th, the fifth Wednesday of this month, Charlie Thweet will be here to lead chanting and meditation at 7 p.m. Decided that it was Tuesday as the 13th next month. We'll be, there'll be a Christmas remembrance service. We're inviting you to remember loved ones who are not with you this Christmas. Our new grief counselor, Shabnam Hashemi, will, with Reverend Tracy and Charlie Thweet, invite you to come and share this sacred space starting Wednesday at 7 p.m. Anyway, on December 21st, which I think is Wednesday. another Wednesday, yes, that's winter solstice Wednesday, actually. There will be no meditation class that night. Joy Katz and Guthrie will be sharing songs for the season starting at 6.30 p.m. Now, let me pause here to admit that I'm probably Joy's biggest fanboy. <laughs> Although we both came to Florida in the same year, 1981, I first met Joy when I started attending Unity Palm Harbor in 2012, 10 years ago. Any presentation by Joy is much more than music. As a music and cultural historian, she infuses her performances with both joy and knowledgeable insights gained over a long and sparkling career. Okay, don't take my word for it. Her list of accolades is far too lengthy to enumerate in one hour-long service. Please visit the website called joyfulnoise.net to have your mind boggled at what this woman has accomplished. And please, 
Give yourselves one of the nicest pleasures of the season. Join us at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday, December 21st. Please visit our website, unityofpalmharbor.org, for our scheduled weekly classes and our full holiday schedule, including our Christmas Eve and Christmas Day services. Oh, you'll raise our consciousness. Thank you. Uh, today's daily word is guidance. And the affirmation is, I use divine wisdom to find my way. Yes, when I'm pondering perplexing questions or I need to make an important choice, I read beyond human reasoning to limitless wisdom of divine mind. Never further away than my next thought. After clarifying my question and considering my available options, I release the situation, focus instead on the divine presence within. I affirm I am using divine wisdom to show me the way. I am using divine wisdom to show me, my humanness, the way. I love that. In prayerful silence, peace envelops me. As I conclude my prayer time and resume my activities, I may experience a flash of insight or a more gradual understanding. However it happens, I trust my next steps will become clear to me. Confident in my divine guidance, I move forward with calm assurance. Matthew 6.33 says, But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Over the mountains I send my love Over the sea I send my love Into the heavens And it returns to me I send my love over the mountains. I send my love over the sea. I send my love into the heavens. And it returns to me. I know we're in this beautiful, quiet space, but I'm going to share a gem with you. In 2017, I got my call to ministry. And this beautiful lady behind me had written this incredible book, and she was sharing it with our congregation. And I looked back at the signature that she put for me, and it said, let's pray, Dr. Yuji. And I saw a woman of substance and strength who walked the walk and spoke the word, and she did it with such great spirit that I went to her and I said, would you be my mentor? as I go through ministerial school. So I want to share a few words before I tell you who she is besides an incredible friend and angel to me. And she has these books out in the foyer. And I know each and every one of you is going to want one. And she opens it with this. If there is anything I have fully learned and removed all doubt about, it is the power of prayer. It has been said that a great prayer is silence. It is that state of being where you remove all distractions and release yourself from worldly cares for a time. This is true. But we should also keep in mind that there are many ways to pray and many prayers to pray. The wonderful thing about prayer is that it is powerful and allows you to place your power in God our source, thus removing the power from the concerning situation, problem, person, or thing. 
that seems to be more powerful, that seems to be more powerful. You have the ability every day of your life. Our best example of the power of prayer comes from the practice of Jesus the Christ. As spirit, using a manifested body, Jesus prayed to God daily. He declared, I and the Father are one. He used the power of prayer in his own life and in the lives of the multitudes of people to whom he ministered. I remember a song, said Dr. Yuji, that she sang in church as a child. What if Jesus had to pray? What about me? Prayer to God brings a harmonious unity to men, body, and soul, and is an art, a gift, a practice given to us in our daily walk in life. And we must most assured in knowing it helps in every area of our life. Prayer replenishes the soul and transfers the hope of a victory from the minds to the souls and provides relief in times of despair, hope when all seems lost. Prayer provides a respite from the burdens of life to a glimmer of possibility. It causes us to know we are not alone and that we can go to God at any time. So I want you to know Dr. Yuji has a whole slew of accolades, including a Ph.D. doctorate in ministry. She's been a counselor. She has served in numerous women's organizations. She is a powerful preacher that comes from the evangelical movement. And I won't even say she toned it down when she found unity. <laughs> I have the graciousness to be her friend, a confidant, a fellow colleague. At one point... I was talking down in southeast Atlanta in this little tiny church. Maybe 12 people would come every Sunday. They said they were small, but they were mighty. And there was a particular Sunday when I lost my voice. My kids were probably grateful. And I called Dr. Yuji. I said, you got to go with me. She goes, I've been waiting for the call. We get in this beautiful, powerful little church, and I can't even scratch out an introduction. And she bellows through the rafters, and then she broke out in gospel. I'm like, I can't compete with that. She said, honey, we're not in competition. We're both here to serve God. So I want to say with the deepest heartfelt thanks that she came today, this week actually, playing in Tampa with her beautiful husband, Paul, to serve here to minister here, for you to have a taste of that delicious spirit that has been a part of my life before 2017, but as a mentor, as a guide, as a prayer partner since then. And she's going to take us into a meditation, then we'll have song, and then she's up here to give you the message. Please welcome my friend, my angel, my mentor, Dr. Reverend U.G. Kirkpatrick. Unity of Palm Harbor. Good morning. Good morning. What a blessing, a privilege to be here today, to be in your midst. And by the invitation of my dear friend, Reverend Tracy Quillen. Let's close our eyes for a moment. We are basking in the language of God. Silence at this time. We are allowing ourselves to go into a place beyond time and space. It is a dimension from whence we have all emanated. We're in a heavenly place. And that place is not outside of us. It does not exist in materiality, but it is within us. Within each of us as all of us, because we are one. We come from the divine 
imagination, vibration of our Creator, with whom together we are one. How interesting. We look like flowers in the garden, different shapes, sizes, whatever, unlimited. But so is God. And so are we. And so as we come to this place, this state of being, it's a state of grace. Not something that we can earn or conjure up, but simply to become still, as scripture tells us. To be still and to know. To know ourselves. To know the I amness, the isness of who and what we are. To know God in the fullness, in the abundance of the eternity of God, which he has placed, which God has placed inside of all of us. And as we stay here in an eternal moment, in time, we are still. As the water ripples in our hearing, we bring ourselves back into the physical realm. And we open our eyes. And as the great writer Florence Scovelshin said, we behold with amazement the wonder that is set before us. Thank you, God. So it is. Look into a child's eyes Tell me what you see Reflections of their hopes and dreams Of what we're meant to be We are born for greatness Every day greatness Born for greatness Every day Every day We're born for greatness Every day greatness Born for greatness Every day Every day There's a soul in every one of us In every neighborhood And we know with all our hearts soul is good It isn't just a righteous star For all the world to see We all do great things every day Quiet Born for greatness 
born for greatness. Every day greatness. Everyone, every day born for greatness. Everyday greatness Born for greatness Every day Every day Every day All right, it's good to be here. And I want to take a moment before I do anything else to celebrate Reverend Tracy Quillen, her second year anniversary. And I'm going to ask you to stand to honor her. And Jonathan is here with her, her son. And as you stand, I want you to say, Jessica. Please stand, the two of you, <laughs> and face your congregation. Congregation, if you'd like, you can stand. This is your senior minister, as you know, Reverend Tracy, and her family, her biological family, her son Jonathan, and Jessica. Let's give them a round of applause, yes, yes. And you may be seated now. Tracy is a good friend, and you know the tradition that I'm from, you know the titles, we're not going to use those today, Tracy and UG. Um, she stood out in my life. I was doing a book signing and ministering at Unity North, and I remember the enthusiasm of Tracy, who at the time was the board president, I believe, at Unity North at that time. And of course, she stood out for more reasons than one. <laughs> Can't miss her. Uh, and she has the most vibrant, beautiful personality, no holds barred. And I remember that Sunday, there was a certain part that I came to, and uh, I called out Tracy's name and a few other people's names. And Tracy stood up. And I mean, she stood up in the crowd, but she also stood up in spirit. And I am glad that we have come to know each other. I have a saying, we've known each other throughout eternity. We just got around to meeting in time a number of years ago. Feel free to use that. That is an original UG-ism. <laughs> <laughs> and so I wanted to honor her today and, and, and say publicly that I do love you and I appreciate you. And I know that there's a saying that there were some who were called, few were chosen, some were sent, and some went. Tracy is called to Unity Palm Harbor for just such a time as this. Amen? Amen. Now, I'm a call and response preacher, okay? <laughs> so please feel free to say amen. She is called for just such a time as this. And as I was thinking of her, and I'm going to get into the message, um, I was thinking with reference to who she is in spirit. And a prophetic word came to me concerning Tracy. She is a builder. She, she probably knows that, and I know in her professional background, she has helped and worked with many builders. But Tracy is a kingdom builder. She calls people, doesn't she? She calls you, not only by phone, but she calls you to the kingdom of God that is really within all of us. And she causes us to be like Mary and Elizabeth when they met before Jesus was born. When they met, the babies leapt in the wombs of the mother. How many of you can identify with that with Tracy? I'm not sure if you're hearing an echo, I am. Um, but that's what she does, and she may have something in mind, knowing her she does, with reference to her work here. But I'm here to tell you, you can give that to God because God has a good sense of humor. 
<laughs> and what God has for you to do as God through you will be done here. And so I say to God be the glory and welcome to this work. Tracy knows I was, it was in 1965, November 15th, 1965. I was 15 years old. Don't try to figure out my age. I'm sure I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> but I accepted my call to the ministry. I love the foundation of my background as a Pentecostal, growing up in a Pentecostal home. That's foundational for me and a great, great foundation. Probably kept me from a whole lot of stuff I might have done. I may not look as good as I do now. I may not act as good. But I am thankful for that and thankful to be here. And as I think about that almost 57 years ago, it's been a long, blessed journey. Been all over the place, preaching, teaching, praying, prophesying, you know, whatever you want to call it. And at the season in my life, as my husband and I are living in Roswell, Georgia, and we attend Unity North, I'm thankful for the privilege to continue as a kingdom builder and to be used by God, for God, as God, for just such a time as now. Now, I'm going to try to sing because I'm going into my message now. The message that I'm giving today, that's your cue, Joy. The message that I'm giving now, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I don't know why you left in the first place. I know Tracy gave you a head up, heads up. <laughs> But I want to talk about paradise now. And so I'm going to attempt to sing a part of a song by the very late, great James Cleveland, who is one of the fathers of gospel music. And it goes like this. I've never been to Paris in the spring or the fall. I've never been to India to see the Taj Mahal. But if I can make it to heaven, that will be good enough for me. Because heaven is the place that I want to be. Oh, heaven where the gates are gold, heaven. Saints can rest their weary souls, heaven. Sit down by the crystal sea, heaven. That will be good enough for me because heaven is the place that I want to be. Now, I don't want you to be shy. I want you to sing. Where the gates are gold, heaven. Saints can rest their weary souls. Sit down by the crystal sea, heaven. That will be good enough for me. Because heaven is the place that I want to be. Amen. 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 Heaven. Heaven. One of my mentors from afar who is now beyond this earth realm, he said, when you find the heaven in you, you will find yourself in heaven. That was Reverend Dyke. I'm sure all of you have heard of Reverend Dyke. And that was one of the things that he said, when you find the heaven in you, you will find yourself in heaven. Well, heaven and paradise, they are interchangeable in terms, of, in terms of meaning. And so, as I talk about paradise found, what is paradise? I'm going to try to use my notes, but if I don't, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Paradise is a place of blessings where the righteous go after death, by definition. That's one of the connotations. And the word paradise is usually synonymous with the word heaven. As Jesus was on the cross dying, and he stood between two thieves, 
And he said in Luke 23 and 43, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Well, you know how we got the idea of paradise actually came from paradise as the origin or the original, original place where mankind was planted. If you accept the creation mythology in the book of Genesis, I certainly do, most, most religions do. And the problem with that is that there is a belief upon which many religious foundations are um, found that we fell from grace. And you're all, I'm sure, familiar with the writing of the late 17th century poet John Milton and his work Paradise Lost that talks about the fall of mankind from grace. And somehow, as a people throughout the earth realm, as we do, it became an accepted trope in terms of a part of our original being. Some, some accept that and some do not accept that. However, paradise was a place, is a place that still exists in, in my tradition, had to learn to get ordained. What is heaven and what is hell? <laughs> Heaven is a place prepared for God and his angels. Hell was a place prepared for sake for the devil and his angels, okay? So getting that out of the way as we kind of go back into the history of how we even felt that we lost paradise. Truly, when we come from paradise, when we come from an eternal dimension before we are in these bodies and as we enter into them, our caretakers indoctrinate us um, from the time that we're babies with reference to this world now, for people like me, I'm in my seventh, I almost said century, my seventh decade. <laughs> it, uh, if, you, if I think about that, all of us had a certain indoctrination, didn't we? By our caretakers who loved us and who presented us with what they were presenting. Well, that is foundational. But in that presentation, according to um, some very smart people, Dr. Bruce Lipton. He talks about the fact that we are indoctrinated for the first five to seven years, and he equates it to a computer download in terms of what we get as children, and then as we grow on and on and on and go into our years of puberty or after puberty, when we begin to fall in love, we think, with another person, when we are really, I've learned, we are falling in love with ourselves, we go into a state of bliss. And that state of bliss is where everything is wonderful and great, a pseudo nirvana, all is well, and you know, it's all wooey wooey, as we might say. <laughs> Anybody remember that besides me? We go into that state of bliss and we lose the program, thankfully, and we begin to develop our own programs in terms of how we want to live and what we want to do. And in those early days as youth, we begin to explore life and we begin to learn about the ups and the downs of life. Some things we were prepared for and some things we absolutely were not prepared for. And so we begin to look outside of ourselves, amen, amen. to find things, to find when I say substances, you can interpret that loosely, however you want to interpret. Uh, to find things that we think will make us happy, that will make us feel good, right? Yeah. Things that we think will cause us to be accepted of society. Uh, we, we, we begin to do things and meet with people and sometimes marry people, or get in relationships with people that we think will enhance us. But paradise, is not outside, you can't find it outside of you. This is a beautiful facility, the ambiance of the grounds and the palm trees, and uh, if you look out the window, the wind blowing, that is so beautiful, and I'm glad that we can behold it with our eyes. We can see it, we can smell sometimes the jasmine in the night when the rains come. Well, we can feel the rains. And all of that's wonderful, but that is through physical bodily perception. But when we get to the place, no matter what's going on, no matter how we feel, no matter what the aches, what the pains, anybody have them? 
Oh, thank God for uh, ibuprofen and Tylenol and Advil and naproxen and whatever else we have to take to help these bodies not ache so much. However, we can take, as we did this morning, and as it's one of the traditions of unity, to sit ourselves down and to be still and to know that paradise, that heavenly place, is within us. I'm going to read just a little bit from a, a chapter in my book. It's not a long chapter, so I hope you won't mind. And it's entitled Divine Paradise, the place from which we came and the place that sometimes we only go to when we find ourselves in some sort of disarray or some, some type of situation that we we can't figure out. Anybody been there? Anybody know what I'm talking about? I don't need to call any of them out. But I will tell you, as I quoted, a great preacher once said, when you find the heaven in you, you will find yourself in heaven. You know, there are people who keep reaching and reaching and doing stuff, trying to find a place of peace. And when they get to their destination, they find out, oh, there's something else I might need to do or something else I might want to do. In a phase of my life when I was going through becoming a single parent and my three children were my greatest joy, and I was a teacher at that time, teaching high school, and from there I went on to continue my education. And when I finished with the master's programs, I wasn't satisfied. I went into the doctoral program, I wasn't satisfied. I went into certification with um, critical incident stress debriefing, always seeking something. And I look back on it and realize that was the pathology to take care of my pain because I was reaching and reaching to feel better about me and who I am and who I was. But I found out that prayer is the trajectory of getting to the heaven inside of us. I'm almost finished. It literally takes us from earth to heaven while we yet inhabit the earth in these temporary bodies. And if we could remember that, as much as we love these bodies and as much as we love ourselves and we love our families, it's temporary. We all know that we've all experienced the leaving or the transition of loved ones, haven't we? And that's so very, very difficult. However, when you need to get to the place of heaven, it's right there. It's closer than a second. It's closer than an instant. It's closer than the nearest breath that we breathe. The powerful presence of heaven on earth is greater and more beautiful to the soul than the most exotic and ornate piece of exquisite work of art and great wonders of the world. I understand that people who are very, very well endowed financially uh, will spend millions, and probably maybe some of you have, on art <clears throat> just to be able to look at it, to stand and stare at it. <sighs> Until you get to the place where you think that's just another possession. We all love beauty, don't we? We should. We all love beauty. This is a beautiful world that we live in. When we can see the beauty in the world, it emanates as a reflection from the inside of us. This book, incidentally, is entitled <clears throat> Prayer and Meditations, A Passport to Paradise. Everywhere we want to go in the world outside the country, we need a passport, don't we? And so in writing this book, that title came to me, A Passport into Paradise. And you have it. You'll have it even more when you purchase the book. I'm only kidding. Uh, <laughs> but you have a passport into paradise every day of the week. It never needs to be renewed. You can renew the spirit of your mind and become transformed into the paradise that you need to see and that you want to see. It is an internal journey, an internal dimension. We must come to the place where we realize prayer as our divine paradise, where all is neat, perfect, holy, and artfully designed. If I were at to ask everybody right now to go to paradise, can't get there by airplane, you can't get there by train, but you can do that right here 
and right now and right in this moment. And sometimes we call on our ministers, don't we? And we should. When we're in a situation, we call on Reverend Tracy, this is going on, that's what's going on. She's here for that. She's here for you. And I continue to get calls, as I shared with you the other day, from people that I've ministered to many, for many, many years. But I found out when you really, really, really need to access heaven, no telephone, no long distance, you can go to God, as we used to say, I go to God in every need, never looking back. I will feel his love, and all is well again. Cast all your cares on him, for he cares for you. Be, there is nothing in vain, for God will see you through. And you say anywhere, anytime, anywhere, anywhere, anywhere and any day. Call him up. Call him up. Deliverance is coming your way. Tell God, tell God about it. Tell God, tell God about it. Tell God, tell God about it. God cares. I and my father are one. Now, my son was a, a musician. He told me, Mommy, nobody can follow you on a piano. <laughs> He was pretty much right, but he really did try. But when I think about, we can go within ourselves. God is not outside of us. Of course, we've all heard of the great God outside of us. Amen? Amen. When we were children. But we have come to know that God lives within. And as Scripture tells us, we are God's. And that is not sacrilegious. When you really and truly find, and I'm sure you know this here, I'm sure that you know that God, who lives on the inside of all of us, is always there, always present, whether we sleep or whether we are awake. Somebody was in trouble once, and I hope this comes out right. If not, it's a story. <laughs> I think it was during the First World War, and people were saying that, you know, so much was going on. There were so many terrible things going on. People were killed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And somebody said, I want to go to sleep, and I'm going to sleep. And they thought of that scripture, God never sleeps and never slumbers. And they said, well, no need for both of us to be awake. I might as well go to sleep. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that came out right. Give yourselves a hand. <laughs> no need for both of us to sleep, but God is present. God is here. Jonathan, tell God about it. We love to tell my, I have three children. I brought three children into the world. And um, whenever something is going on, and they're wonderful, beautiful children, I am happy with the way they show up in this world. But they will call me, and I will always take them to scripture, take them to prayer, knowing Romans 8 and 28, that all things work together because that's what these, these are. These are things. Just like inside your watch, the jewels, the, you know, the old watches that had jewels that we used to wear many, many years ago. Some of us still have them. They know how to work synchronistically. And if you take a look at it, it wouldn't make sense to you or to me unless you're a watchmaker. If you've ever looked at a beautiful rug, on the outside, the pattern, you can understand it's so beautiful. But if you look on the underside of it, you see knots and gnarls, and it looks like it doesn't make any sense. Well, you know what? That's the way life is. Sometimes we have things all planned out the way we think they should go. But something comes up. This comes up. That comes up. Death comes up. Whatever comes up, things that we did not prepare ourselves for physically. However, when we remember that paradise is not lost, paradise is now, paradise is found within us because we are little worlds. One of my classic messages used to be dust and divinity. You can't do much with the dust except move it from one place to the next, but the divinity, the real who we are, the realness of who we are. 
lives on the inside of us. So paradise is not lost. Amen? Amen. Paradise is when? Now. Paradise is when? Now. Let the church say now. now. And let the church say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. And all is well. Thank you so much and God bless you. Just say a word about prayer chaplains for a second. I have served for some years as a prayer chaplain, and I would like everyone to know that being a prayer chaplain, first of all, prayer chaplains do love to pray. But being a prayer chaplain is more than wearing a pretty stole. Prayer chaplains, before you ever get to see them, have been thoroughly trained. They're trained to listen very attentively. They're trained in positive, affirmative prayer. And they can do a world of good for you. They want to pray with you. So please, if you have any concern on your mind, and it doesn't have to be earth shattering, they're, they're also trained not to be judgmental of anyone's needs or requests. So please visit our prayer chaplains when they're available to you after service. Take their calls when they call you every month for your wellness call. And uh, just celebrate the fact that we have people that have this special training and ability to help you. Now our ushers have already come forward. So I want to thank those of you who consistently give to our church by mailing checks or going through our PayPal account when you join us online and when you give here today in person. Joy is going to do some special music now during our celebration, but first, our little offering prayer, if you'll hold your offering in your hands and say this prayer, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you. I am spirit play, spirit play, everywhere and always I am spirit led, I am spirit led, spirit led, everywhere and always I am spirit led, flowing like a river of peace, I am nature's wandering child, love cannot be added to me, I am made complete in the divine I am spirit led spirit fed everywhere and always I am spirit led I am spirit led spirit fed everywhere and always I am spirit led this magic in every day like a beautiful song as I'm choosing my way there's a voice inside to guide me along. I am spirit led, spirit led. Everywhere and always I am spirit led. I am spirit led, spirit led. Everywhere and always I am spirit led. I am spirit led, spirit led. Everywhere and always I am spirit led. I am spirit led. Spirit fed everywhere and always. I am spirit fed. Thank you all. Thank you, Joy. And now we're ready to suffer the little children to come unto us. <laughs> Let's sing a song for them. You are walking in the light. In the light, in the light. You are walking in the light. In the light of God, in the light, 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 in the light of God. Okay, this is the, my last chance to mention that our closing ceremony is a little different today. So after we do our peace song, please remain standing in silence until we 
complete the rest of the service. Okay? Now we're going to do our closing prayer. And this is the standard one that we all know and love by James Dillett Freeman. Together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Where we are, God is. Amen.